three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Lighthouse Live with Jordan Devitt, the show where we give God the glory from this generation to the next. And now to your host, Jordan Devitt. Good morning. Welcome back to Lighthouse Live. I'm your host, Jordan Devitt, and I'm so happy that you joined me this morning for the broadcast. I want to thank Bishop Dan and Pastor Garland for allowing this special opportunity to be possible. I love them so much, and I'm just so grateful for all that they do for the kingdom of God and making this possible. So I want to talk to you all today about how God never misses. Sometimes in life it may feel like maybe we're doing things and we didn't get recognition or, or, or we're sacrificing and we're living for the Lord and, and maybe things didn't get acknowledged or whatnot. But I want to encourage you today how God never misses what you're doing for him. He's always watching. He's always accounting. And everything that you do for the kingdom will always be rewarded and it will always be uh, accounted for the efforts that you've made for the kingdom of God. And it's such a blessing to know and to hear about. And I really know that today there's so many of us who, you know, we're serving, we're, we're doing things for the Lord, and, and it's not necessarily that we need it, but it's important to understand how God always sees through what you do and your consistency and the importance of it. So the first thing I want to give you all is consistency brings rewards. Hebrews 11:6 6 says this, but without faith, is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, sometimes I think that we don't automatically see the harvest of our diligence to the Lord. We begin to think that it goes unnoticed. But I'm here to tell you, everything that you do for God is rewarded and will be rewarded. Here on earth, we live a life where sometimes we do things and in humans' eyes, we may think, well, you know, if it's not seen, then it's not going to get rewarded. And although that actually may be true, for God, it's just not like that. Because God sees everything. And he knows everything. There's never something that you can do for God and it not be seen. There's never something that you can um, serve God in or do for the Lord and it not be accounted for. Just, it's, it's always going to be seen. One thing I want to note is we must believe him, though, that he will reward us and that he sees it. One of the issues that I see we deal with today is we think that, you know, we're willing to do the things for God. But sometimes it's hard for us to know that those rewards are going to come to fruition and that he will reward us. And God doesn't like that. God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to, as we sow, as we serve, as we follow his word, as we do all these things, actually expect a blessing. Expect it. Expect that he will come through for us. Because when we don't, it makes God, in a sense, think, well, why wouldn't they believe my word? This is how I like to explain it and how I like to look at it. Imagine like you were saying to someone, hey, I'm going to take you out to dinner tonight, okay? And they say, okay, sounds good, you know. You, you tell them the address to the restaurant. Um, you give them the time. You're always faithful as a person to them in what you say. And basically, you go to the restaurant, you get there, and the person doesn't show up, okay? And the next day you call them and say, hey, what happened? You know, I, I wanted you to come to the restaurant. I said I was going to buy it for you and whatnot. And they say, well, I didn't think that you were serious. You'd be like, what? What do you mean? I sent you the address. I gave you the time. We're, you know, friends and or family, and I've been always very true to my word, you would be like, that was really, it didn't make sense. They didn't expect that I was going to be there for them. And sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes we begin to be in a position where we are supposed to 
be expecting from God, but because of maybe disappointment in the world, we don't expect the blessing. And there's nothing actually wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with expecting that God will be faithful and that he'll see you through and that he will bless you. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing. That's why the verse says, without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder for them that diligently seek him. You diligently seek the Lord. You diligently serve the Lord. You diligently sow and help the Lord in his work for the kingdom. And it's a blessing. It's an opportunity. And at the same time, God will bless you. So expect the blessing. I expect the blessing. I expect that God will take care of me. And I speak to God and, and tell him what my needs are. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with expecting the blessing. Matter of fact, expect the blessing more today. Expect it more. Whatever it is that you may need help with, whatever it is that you may um, be asking God for, expect it more, okay? I want to challenge you with that expect it. Write it down. What is it that you are looking for and that you would ask God for his divine intervention for? You're doing what God is asking you to, for him or what he's asking you to do and he will take care of your needs. You know, something as simple as yesterday I was working within my budget and I was like, God, just, you know, make some deals come out of the store. <laughs> and it's so simple, of course. But this store, I mean, I, had, I got deals I had never seen before, over half off. And to me, that was God saying that, listen, I'll give you what you need, your daily bread. I'll give you the blessing. Expect it, though. And there's nothing wrong with that. You should, in fact, do it more. Stop thinking it's wrong to ask God for something or to expect something from him as a son or a daughter. You see, we're not God's adults. We're actually God's children. And what that means is this. As God's children, would it ever be bad to expect or ask for something from your parents or to ask for something that from your guardians no, it's not. It's not weird. It's not bad. Not at all. A good parent would be able to say, okay, yeah, whatever I have, I would love to give it to you. I would love to help you. In the same way, there's nothing wrong with that. You should expect it. Okay? Now, God will reward it. And he'll take care of that for you. Number two is this. It's uh, something I heard once. I'm stacking my heavenly bank account. Second John 1 and 8 says this. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. There's a story of a woman who was constantly serving, constantly giving, constantly going to church, helping out. Um, and her daughter was always with her because she was young, right? And the little girl was frustrated because she had to go so much. And she was like, Mom, why do we have to do all this? Why do we, uh, you know, always at the church and whatnot? As sometimes kids do. And she said, because we're stacking our heavenly bank account. And I thought that was so sweet. You know, I always see that as believers, we, we have two paths that we can travel. We can have one path where we do what appeases the flesh. We deny um, doing things that would ever make us uncomfortable or... or something that the flesh wouldn't want to do. But then we have the, the path where we can do what the Spirit and the Lord is asking us to do. What's challenging, what can be maybe frustrating, hard, difficult at times. But I want to encourage you with this. When you do what God says, what the Spirit is challenging you to do, you will see that your heavenly bank account will be added to but even now you'll be rewarded. When you help the Lord, you will always be taken care of. When you help his people, you'll always be taken care of. 
always, I, I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. It's just guaranteed. Because what's going to happen is we're going to need help at some point or another, which we always, which, you know, it's, it's just how life works. And God will help you. God will make sure that what you need will be situated here on earth, but also in heaven. You know, there was a, a time just recently where there was a man who I encountered at the gas station. He, he was, you know, running up to people's cars, asking for money for his gas tank, and it was empty. And he came up to me, and I, I was in a rush, and I was filling up, like, my tire. And the man was like, hey, can you help me, you know, for some gas money? And to be honest with you, I said no initially. I said no, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and then the Lord challenged me and just said, what if you were in that situation? And immediately I got out my wallet and I done whatever I had and I gave the man the money and he was so grateful and, and it was such a sincere heart. And a few days later, I needed help with something. And what I needed help with could have been an expensive job, expensive fix, but it was done for free. And I don't take that coincidental because I realized that God helps those who are there for him, for his people. And when you are doing the will of God, when you're doing the work of God, God will never let you suffer or be without help because you were there and you did what he asked you to do. And I'm not saying it's this God owes you in a sense. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that when you're faithful to God, God will always be faithful to you. And God knows and sees what you're doing. He sees it. It's evident to him. He sees the sacrifices you make. He sees the, the goodness that you give to people and the love that you show people. And he's not going to let you down. My third point is this. God doesn't forget. Hebrews 6 and, this, 6 and 10 says this. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love that you have shown him as you've helped his people and continue to help them. This is something that we need to recognize as a rebuke and at the same time as a blessing. When we're not treating people good, God sees and doesn't forget that. But at the same time, when we are, God sees that and he'll make sure that you're taken care of too. He'll always. It, it comes back around. Karma ain't real, but doing good to God's people, doing good to God's kingdom comes back to you. And let me, let me give you a uh, nugget here. Do it with a good heart. Listen, if you're going to do it, do it with a good heart, with a good attitude, with a good posture. Because God would want that. There was someone who I remember needed some, it was another financial situation. I, I helped him out. There was like a, maybe a hundred bucks. I, I don't know, something. And within three days, it was given back to me in another way. And I'm saying that to help encourage you that what you do for God's kingdom always comes back, will always be seen, and is always accounted for. There's never anything that you can be missed out on by God. You know, we, I want to remind you of this. Whatever you sow for God, it will always come back in a harvest for you. When you sow, not only financially, but in every aspect of life, what you sow for God comes back to you in that same harvest. If you sow love, you will reap a harvest of love. If you sow gentleness to people, you will reap a harvest of gentleness. If you sow your time to people, someone's going to come and sow time to you. I just came out of a situation where I know God blessed me 
and sowed back into me and, and gave me a harvest of labor for someone else. Because God will always give you a harvest of the thing that you sow. Remember that. This is extremely important. This is a principle that is in God's word all throughout it. Whatever you sow to God now, God gives you a harvest of it. Always. Remember that. Watch what you're sowing. You're going to see it. Begin to recognize what are you sowing today. And it's the same way if you sow bad things, unfortunately. But if you sow bad, you will reap something that you may not want to reap. And so it's important that we recognize what we sow will come back and you'll be receiving a harvest for that in which you sow. For instance, in the life of David, David, I really believe that because he was so faithful to God, he was so consistent, because he was so um, just consistent in his life and his walk with God, when he fell and when he had issues, God still covered him. And I really see that because of his life and consistency with God, in that moment when he could have really been in a lot of trouble and could have lost really everything completely, God showed him mercy. Why is that? Well, I want to remind you, David was merciful and gracious to King uh, Samuel, or King Solomon. I can't, I can't think of his name right now. But to the King Saul. Saul. He was merciful to King Saul. I'm thinking about his son and the prophet. But think about that for a moment. God gave him mercy and grace in the time when he needed it, but when someone else needed it, earlier on, David did what God asked him to do. So that just goes to show you do reap what you sow and to be mindful of what you're sowing because God doesn't forget. And lastly is this. Consider the reliability of who said it. The Bible says, by faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive and even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful, who had promised, Hebrews 11, 11. This is very powerful. Watch it and hear me what I'm saying right now. Maybe you can't trust a friend, okay? That's fine. Maybe not even a family member. Hey, that's happened. Maybe not even a coworker. But... Consider the reliability of God. Sarah believed God because she considered who gave the promise of having a child at old age. God's track record is 100% accurate. Every prophecy has come to pass that God says and will come to pass that God declares. Okay? The Bible is perfect. God's word is correct. His promises are always true. And Sarah was smart enough to realize who gave the promise. Sometimes it can be hard because we compare people to God since that's what we see and maybe what we know. But people are crazy. They change their minds. They, they are in times unfaithful and deceived, sadly. God never will. God never misses. He's not like people who failed and he can't fail. He always comes through. He's a good, good father who loves you, and he is always going to come through for you. What we have to recognize today is this. Consider the reliability of who said what they said. Sarah trusted God because she knew who God was and what he could do. It wasn't the fact that she was believing a person for a miracle to take place. She believed a God who was faithful all her life, okay? So when God gives you something, you should be able to see that God is a man, not a man that shall lie. And his reliability is spot on. It's perfect. And if we would begin to just come to a place where we stop letting so much of 
the world and what the world does be projectile onto us, we would begin to understand God's reliability is faithful. If there's anyone you can rely on, it's God. And he never misses. He just doesn't. And that's the message of today. I want to take a moment and reiterate on the points. Consistency brings rewards, okay? Stop letting yourself live a life where God said he would do something and you don't expect or believe him for it, okay? God is faithful to reward us for what your consistency has been towards him. There's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, we should begin to expect more out of God, not in a way of uh, arrogance or anything like that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is in a way of love and believing him, okay? In the same way I explained the story of, hey, if someone says to you, who is trustworthy, right? You, want, you know, want to go out to dinner with them and, and you just didn't believe them, how would that make that person feel? I know for me, I would be like, well, why? And you might not ever actually really want to take them out to dinner if you were going to treat them. It, it might be a little odd, right? In the same way, it doesn't make sense for us not to expect God to take care of us when his word literally says he rewards them that diligently seek him. But we have to believe him for that, okay? Now, when I move forward, we can stack our heavenly bank account. And I know that it's, it sounds a little maybe goofy, but the truth is, when you do things for God, you're stacking your heavenly bank account. God's building you a beautiful mansion in heaven. God's got you. Don't think that what you do for God isn't seen. It's always seen. For humans, maybe not. For God, you got it covered. He always takes care of it, always sees it. It's always accounting for it. So don't ever fret on what you're doing for God. No, he's seeing it this very moment. God doesn't forget. You know, where people may forget, God does not forget. Never. David sowed mercy to King Saul, and God sowed mercy to King David when he needed it. When you sow and you do things for God, know this. God is going to come through for you in some way or another. Don't think that he won't. Expect the blessing. Expect that he will. And he will. Believe me. I've seen it over and over. When you take care of God, his house, his people, he comes through and always will take care of what you need. Don't ever believe the lie of the devil, the enemy, your flesh, that it's not going to work out. Listen, when you take care of God, his house, what he is asking of you, he'll always make sure that everything is good for you. And lastly, consider the reliability of who said it. God is the one who said it to Sarah. Sarah was smart enough to realize that God is faithful. And would you too today? God is faithful. He's true. And he will come through for you in everything that you ask him for. Everything that you believe him about, he will. So remember that. Trust that. Know that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want to take a moment right now and just pray with you all. Lord, we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for this message today. We thank you that you don't miss ever on the things that you say, your promises. Lord, I thank you, God, that we don't even have to fret or worry 
about what we do for you, Lord, but that you see it. Thank you, Lord, that it's okay for us to expect a blessing. Lord, today, I expect a blessing. And we come in agreement together and expect, Lord, that you would come through for us and everything that we're believing you for. Finances and provision and health. Lord, I expect it. We expect it as your people today. And we thank you for it, God, that you're faithful and that you're true. We pray today, God, that we would understand that you don't miss what we do for you and for your kingdom. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, I'm so glad that you joined me today for the broadcast. Join back next week. And again, as I always say, thank you so much for your continuous support, your faithfulness, and your love to this broadcast. It means so much to us, and we sincerely appreciate it all. Get your new book from Pastor Dan Willis, The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. For over 40 years, Pastor Dan Willis has led a growing multicultural church community in the suburbs of Chicago. His insight, wisdom, and overall love for people are sure to bless and empower your ministry. Order your copy of The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration today. Log on to www.danwillis.org today and take your ministry to the next level.